In today's video we'll talk about a very important topic when it comes to polyphasic sleeping, namely the developmental process for the brain as we age. This is the main reason why we have age recommendations for sleep reductions at certain ages, since some processes finish maturing faster than others. Uh, Alright, stick around for an interesting video. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. Um, in this video we'll examine the brain development uh, timeline for normal healthy people. Um, it's worth noting that if you've been in a traumatic situation or you're otherwise not healthy, uh, this timeline may not be applicable to you. It should also be noted that the brain never stops developing as it changes throughout life. So instead of using that as a waypoint, we'll instead focus on certain parts of your body and when they fully mature or turn into their adult, adult count counterparts. The purpose of this video is to help you assess the risks of a polyphasic sleep pattern at specific ages. And what do I mean by that? Well, as you probably know, we have a video series about whether polyphasic sleeping is actually dangerous, which will be linked in the description. Uh, while all entries in the series seem to conclude that polyphasic sleeping isn't dangerous, uh, we cannot know for sure until someone uh, has been on a polyphasic schedule for several decades, uh, if this is the case. And we also need to have several uh, long-term studies conducted to conclude this. Um, and because of that, we can't prove with 100% certainty that the no developmental issues will arise from someone sleeping in a polyphasic pattern. Even though the evidence is currently pointing to that not being the case. Okay, as in uh, they, there won't be any developmental issues. So. Hopefully you'll be able to grasp what exactly you're risking if you choose to sleep in a polyphasic sleep pattern when your brain hasn't yet fully matured. Great, so now that now with that that's done, let's finish uh, or let's instead start talking about the actual timeline. Um, I should also mention that I don't have an education in this field and have only researched these topics on a casual uh, level. So it may not be a complete list by any means. If you are a neuroscientist or a neurobiologist uh, or a student in these fields who has more information about these topics, please don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comment section below so other people can learn from you. Anyways, we should start before the teenage years. When you're 11 years old, your amygdala and hippocampus should have matured. Your amygdala is responsible for the perception of emotions such as uh, fear, anger, sadness, as well as controlling uh, of aggression. The amygdala helps store memories uh, of events and emotions so that you will be able to recognize similar things in the future. Your hippocampus on the other hand plays an important role in the formation of new memories uh, and is also associated with learning and emotions. At 12 the synapses uh, in your brain have reached their adult density and the gray matter in your frontal lobe and parental lobe peaks. Uh, gray matter could be said to be the neurons in your brain, so it peaking symbolizes that the specific part of the brain has fully matured. Uh, brain synapses are responsible for transferring electrical signals throughout your body, so them reaching an adult state is also an important milestone. When you're 13, the areas of your brain that are involved in special orientations and language have matured. And when you're 16, your corpus callosum has finished thickening, uh, which improves adolescents' ability to process information. At this age, the gray matter in your temporal lobe also peaks, and that's why we advise people against shortening their sleep before this age. Once this part of the brain has finished thickening, you are a bit more clear in uh, regards to your brain development. And 
Let's now take a quite a large jump ahead in time. When you're 20, most types of white matter tracts are going to peak, uh, which signifies that to the to, that the large proportion of your brain uh, has finished maturing. Uh, there are still parts in your brain that aren't done, and some types of white matter tracts are still maturing and growing in size and numbers, but the bulk of the work is done here. White matter is the part of your central nervous system that is made up of me uh, myelated axons and white matter is responsible for learning, regulating brain functions and communicating between different parts of the brain. That leaves us with one other event. At age 25 your prefrontal cortex fully matures. This is the part of the brain that is responsible for rational and not emotionally driven decisions and it's the last part of your brain that matures. Once you've overcome this hurdle, uh, you're pretty much good to go on the experimental side of things, since you won't be at least risking any parts of your brain that are still maturing. Still, reducing your sleep by extreme amounts can lead to other negative uh, things happening to you, um, and uh, you, need to be, you need to remember to be careful with those things with uh, more extreme schedules. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about sleep needs and how much you can realistically reduce your sleep while you're on a polyphasic schedule, we've made a video on it that you can check out after you watch this one. Uh, the link to it will be in the description. So, okay, thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new. Uh, now you should be able to be more aware of the risks associated with reducing sleep at certain ages. And while I don't remember, I don't, while I don't believe that there is a risk to adapting to a polyphasic schedule, it's best to play it safe and follow the community recommendations for the specific sleep needs at specific ages. Okay, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Remember to nap well, people!